President Yori Kaguta Museveni addresses the nation on the current situation in the country. We have the story in our bulletin today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Nahabu Kajira and in the headlines today. And COVID-19 vaccination at Kololo halted for Museveni state of nation address. And Chad's president visits Angola in a bid to strengthen relations. And in our sports today, FUFA says no fans allowed in stadiums, again due to coronavirus. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Now, Africa Today starts with one of our top stories. Preparations were in high gear at Kololo Independence Grounds as President Museveni makes his State of the Nation address today. We have the report. The event was transferred to Kololo Independence Grounds in order to cater for observance of social distancing measures that move made possible owing to the amendment of the rules of procedure of Parliament last year. The changes enable the President in 2020 to deliver his speech through the Zoom video conferencing technology from the State House to MPs at Parliament House. This year's security has been beefed up at Kololo as guests arrived at the venue for the ceremony that kicked off at 2 p.m. Members of parliament started arriving at 10 a.m. The speaker arrived at 1 p.m. and the president arrived at 2 p.m. The address is in a fulfillment of the constitutional requirement stipulated Article 101 subsection 1 of the Constitution of Uganda ahead of the opening of the new parliament session of the 11th parliament. Mr. Seven his speech highlighted the achievements of government in the last few months and also gave a way forward to the existing challenges including the new wave of COVID-19 crisis, insecurity, poverty, corruption, unstable public debt and economic instability amongst others. Katende Chawasinga reporting for TV Africa. Thank you so much, our reporter. Now, moving on, the mass vaccination at Kololo ceremonial grounds has been halted to ready grounds for President Museveni's State of the Nation address that was scheduled for today, Friday 4th, June 2021. We have more on this story. In a tweet, the Minister of Health spokesperson, Emmanuel Aineviona, said that the Kololo ceremonial grounds, which have served as a mass vaccination center this week, will now have to be readied to receive the president for the State of the Nation address. According to Aineviona, the health ministry will announce the next steps accordingly and when the exercise will resume. The well-attended mass vaccination exercise at Kololo initially commenced on Monday this week and thousands have so far benefited from it. According to Aineviona, a total of 6,851 people were vaccinated on Wednesday. 6,143 people of these were receiving their first dose, while 708 were getting their second and last dose. The State of the Nation address, also known as the Opening of Parliament, resumes one of the most important annual events in the parliamentary calendar, where the President delivers a speech focusing on the plans of the government for the next years. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now let's go for a quick break. We shall come back with more news. Welcome back from the break. You're still watching TV Africa, the right to know now. In our international news today, Chad's new head of state, Mahamat Edris, the president of the Transitional Military Council, who succeeded his father, Idris Debi Itno, met with Angola's president, Lorenko, during a visit in Launda on Wednesday. We have more on this story. Chad has requested Angola to help it gain its stability even as the government is shaken by the recent insecurity elements. Chad's political and security situation has been dwindling following the death of the re-elected president Idris Debi Itino in April. Angola currently leads the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region, a security organization that brings together the heads of state of the region. Chad is not a member and was invited earlier this year by Angola to a summit of the organization. In addition, 
Relations between the two countries have been strengthened in areas such as oil, energy, transport, finance, and agriculture. As part of the 100 million US dollar debt settlement agreement between the two countries, Angola is expected to obtain 75,000 head of cattle from Chad over a five year period. Thank you so much, our reporter. Now, more of our international news today. President Abdel Majid, together with his Army Chief of Staff, said Changriha visited the Molisario front leader Brahim Gali at a military hospital in Algiers following his return to Algeria after six weeks of medical treatment in Spain. We have more. Algerian President Abdel Majid Tabun described the visit as his duty and reaffirmed his support for Gali's cause of liberating Western Sahara. The Algerian president also thanked Spain for welcoming Gali and for the delicate care he had received. Algeria is the main supporter of the Polisario Front, which has for decades fought Morocco for the independence of Western Sahara, a desert region bigger than Britain, which was a Spanish colony until 1975. Gali's imminent departure had been announced late on Tuesday by Spain's foreign ministry, who had informed their Moroccan counterparts without saying where he was going. Gali has headed the Polisario Front since 2016 and is the president of the Sahrawi Democratic Arab Republic, a self-declared state in an almost landlocked area flanking Mauritania's border. Rabat has offered Western Sahara autonomy but insists that the territory, which is rich in phosphates and offshore fishing, is part of the Moroccan kingdom. Well, thank you so much, Harry Potter. Now, moving on, Algerian President Abdel Majid has said that France should now fully recognize the colonial crimes it committed in his country, where tribes were decimated and land from Algerians was given to colonial white settlers. We have more. Algerian President Abdel Majid Tebun said that French colonization of Algeria started in the 19th century with a genocide perpetrated over the first 40 years where whole tribes had been completely decimated and their villages scorched. He also referred to the massacre of 8th May 1945 when the French authorities killed thousands of Algerians during a peaceful demonstration when the Algerians were celebrating the end of World War II and demanding independence. The colonization of Algeria by France, which began in 1830, ended in 1962 after a seven-year war of independence that left 1.5 million Algerians dead. Last week, President Macron asked Rwanda to forgive France for its role in the 1994 Rwandan genocide. And the call by the Algerian leader comes less than a week after Germany apologized to Namibia for the genocide there at the beginning of the last century. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. Now, moving on, the German and Namibian governments have issued out a joint statement fleshing out some of the details of the deal they reached over the genocide at the beginning of the 20th century. Last week, the German government agreed that the slaughter was a genocide, issued an apology, and promised development aid worth more than 1.1 billion euros without a mention of reparations. We have more on this report. The German Namibian statement stated that Germany apologized and bowed before the descendants of the victims and asked for forgiveness for the sins of their forefathers committed more than 100 years ago, adding that it is not possible to undo what has been done. The statement also says some of the development projects will benefit the descendants of the particularly affected communities in line with their identified needs and will be implemented in consultation with them. The lack of reparations has angered some in the affected communities, while others have accepted the proposals. Germany colonizers killed tens of thousands of Ovaherero and Nama people in Namibia between 1904 and 1908. This amounted to some 80% of the Ovaherero and over 40% of the Nama. 
Their land and livestock were also confiscated. The statement clearly draws a line under the idea of reparations, saying that both governments share the understanding that these amounts mentioned above settle all financial aspects of the issues relating to the past. Now, in our business news today, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said on January 25th that Biden administration is working to put the 19th century abolitionist Harriet Tubman on the front of the $20 bill, replacing President Andrew Jackson, who owned enslaved people and forcibly relocated Native Americans. We have more. Despite the growing national push to honor the contributions of women and people of color and Biden's personal promise to do so, Tubman is still not set to appear on the 20 US dollar by the end of Biden's first term or even a hypothetical second term. If the current timeline holds, it will have taken a full 16 years to realize the suggestion of a nine-year-old girl whose 2014 letter to the then President Barack Obama publicly launched the process. During an interview, Senator Jean Shaheen wondered how a country that can put a helicopter on Mars cannot be able to design a 20 US dollar bill in less than 20 years if at all they were committed. The Tubman battle has become a case study in the difficulty of marshalling the bureaucratic machinery of government according to activists who have been working for years to change America's paper money to reflect what they say are its current values. The delay is notable in part because Biden relied on a coalition of women and black voters to win the White House and promised to mobilize every element of government to promote gender and racial equity. There has never been a black person on U.S. currency, nor has there been a woman on a bill in the modern era, despite repeated attempts to diversify the currency. Tubman is a unique figure in American history, escaping from slavery to become a well-known conductor on the Underground Railroad who led enslaved people to freedom. Thank you so much, our reporter. Now, away from business, in Africa Today Health, President Yorick Kaguta Museveni and the First Lady Janet got their second jabs of the coronavirus vaccine from Nakasira State Lodge on, on Thursday afternoon. We have the report. The President and First Lady, who by taking the second jobs completed the recommended dose to minimize effects of the deadly virus, urged Ugandans to emulate them and get vaccinated. Through his Twitter handle, President Museveni said that Uganda started with the high-risk groups like health workers, teachers, security and people with comorbidities with a target of covering over 4 million people. According to the World Health Organization, for vaccines that require two doses, the first dose presents antigens, which are proteins that stimulate the production of antibodies to the immune system to the immune system for the first time. The president assured Ugandans that vaccines are safe and effective but urged them to continue wearing masks, washing hands with soap and water, sanitizing, ensuring good ventilation indoors, physically distancing and avoiding crowds to minimize transmission. The development comes at a time when COVID cases have continued to surge as Uganda battles with the second wave of the deadly virus. Well, thank you so much, Harry Potter. We also urge you to go and have your vaccination. Well, moving on, in a sports news today, the Federation of Uganda Football Association has backpedaled on its earlier decision that allowed up to 200 fans to watch games, citing the surge in the number of positive coronavirus cases and deaths. The ban starts with Uganda cranes against South Sudan 
at St. Mary's Stadium in Chitende. We have more. In a statement signed by Decorous Chiesa, the Federation of Uganda Football Association's Competition Secretary, and saturated all the stakeholders, the decision was reached basing on the current statistics from the Minister of Health. FUFA had already allowed up to 200 fans to watch FUFA organized and FUFA authorized competitions with the strong adherence of standard operation procedures, which is no longer attainable in the current situation. In the statement, FUFA said that in order to ensure the health and safety of players, technical staff and all stakeholders, all matches shall be played without spectators or fans until further not say. The statement added that all FUFA authored competitions and those organized under FA are all bound to the document, including the Stanbic Uganda Cup that is in the later stages. Last season, the Uganda Cup was cancelled while the league was halted with five games to play and Vipers Sports Club were declared league champions. Katende Chawasinga, reporting for TV Africa. Well, thank you so much, Harry Potter. Now, more of our sports news today. The She Maroons FC are the champions of the 2020-2021 FUFA Women Elite League after defeating Rhine's SSWFC in the final played on Thursday at the FUFA Technical Center in Jeru. We have more on this report. In a close the contest of the affair, striker Millicent Namwembe scored all important goals to guide the centuries to success. The lateral forward struck home in the 75th minute, capitalizing from rebound after goalkeeper Eresina Jemba saved initially. The final was graced by several dignitaries, such as FUFA first vice president Justice Mugisha, who was the guest of honor. The others included FUFA executive committee members Isa Magola and Chris Kalibara, plus women football associate chairperson Margaret. Kowinji. Shimaloons showed class throughout the tournament winning all the six games played, including the final. For winning league title, Shimaloons earned a cash prizing of 8 million shillings, while the runners-up, Reigns SS Women Football Club, got 5 million Ugandan shillings. In the third place playoffs, Unyalugul Girls overcome Wakiso Hills winning the game 2-1. Wakiso Hills got their consolation through Sal and Namatovu. Namwembe finished the tournament as the top scorer, while her teammate, Joan Nagai, was named the most valuable player. Um, talking about this trophy, when we came here, we, we came here determined. And um, our target was to, to qualify to the Super League. And um, we had to win every game. Every game for us was a final. Uh, we prepared very, very, early, very early, very well, uh, starting from November last year, um, when, they handed, when they handed the team for me. Um, yeah, when we came here, we, we had to win every game. Every game was a final, as I, as I said. Uh, but that was not enough. We had to qualify the Super League. That was the target. We set the target and we achieved it. Uh, the trophy is just a bonus. So we took the trophy and I'm very, very happy. I'm very happy. Yeah, in your own opinion? No? All, uh, the organization that we had, uh, the planning, the management, um, the fans, uh, the encouragement from uh, other coaches, uh, then when we came here, the organization that was here, the hospitality, you know, it gave us, it gave us uh, a different spirit, you know, it magnified, put the fire in us. So we had to push on. When we came here, we had to magnify the fire in us and that pushed us out. And having a... Just to say that, yeah, yeah, that our neighbors are going to be able to do more things. But we have to do more things. 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 It's a gem of Renzes' women football club took the goalkeeper of the tournament while Katakashi were awarded with the fair play gang. Katende Chavasinga reporting for TV Africa. Well, thank you so much, Harry Potter. Now, before we end the bulletin, let's have a recap of our top stories. And COVID-19 vaccination at Kololo halted for Museveni, state of nation address. And Chad's president visits Angola in a bid to strengthen relations. And in our sports today, FUFA says no fans allowed in stadiums, again due to coronavirus. 
Well, thank you so much for watching with us for more. We started from don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We shall keep updating it is TV Africa, the right to know. This is Africa, and that was the news.